I analyzed 100 clutches and here's what I learned. Now there are many Valorant clutches that cannot be replicated due to their insane timing. One enemy remaining. One. Lucky shots. or pure genius outplays. He's got his weapon out, they'll never expect him to be here! Oh my god! At the same time, clutching can seem like a coin toss, where whichever player sees the other one first wins. However, after analyzing so many clutches, there are certain techniques that players can implement in their own gameplay. Let's start with the 1v1 bomb plan situation, which is arguably the most nerve-wracking scenario, yet very commonly encountered. As the attacker, your goal in a 1v1 post-plant situation is to either eliminate the defender while they're defusing, or to stall long enough that the defender cannot defuse the spike. A great tip to keep in mind while in this 1v1 is boasters three second rule of clutching. Look at this clip where Fnatic Boaster explains how you should approach a 1v1 situation against someone trying to defuse the spike. You gotta count your Mississippis. Three Mississippis I can swing and get a free damage off. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, swing and tuck in again because he's wanna, he's gonna wanna get the half when he's here. He's gonna wanna stick it. He's not gonna be thinking about getting off of it. Ready? So I know he hasn't got half yet. Has it got one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi? Hello. Again, it's important to consider how much time you have left for the spike. If the spike has a lot of time left, then you want to jiggle peek the diffuser at three seconds to get them off the spike instead of committing to a gunfight. This is because the defender will most likely get off since they know they have a lot of time to work with. However, if you know the spike is running low on time, then you can try shooting at the three second mark because the defender is most likely going to hyper focus on sticking the spike before trying to get off. On the other hand, now let's talk about how a defender plays a 1v1 post plan situation. Typically, the defender is at disadvantage advantage in this scenario, but that's only if the attacker plays it right, which isn't the case in many of our ranked games. As a defender, you first need to understand where the spike is planted for. Sometimes this will give away the location of where the attacker could be playing. However, many times there will be too many spots the opponent could be hiding. The most important thing to do is to tap the spike as early as possible so you can figure out the position of the attacker. And after you tap the spike, do not make a footstep noise and hold your crosser in the area you suspect the player is most likely at. Too many players in lower elo will silent walk and try to clear the whole site, hoping the attacker will peek them or that they will find the attacker. While this may work sometimes, most of the times this just eats from the time you have to defuse a spike. You need to tap the bomb early so that the attacker will show his presence instead of wasting time trying to find him. You also want to pay attention to the agent you are facing so that you know what utility they can use. For example, if you're facing a killjoy, then you need to shoot the mollies on the ground before you tap the spike. If you're facing a brim or silva who has their ult, you need to tap the spike early so that you still have time to defuse. Look at this clip by Shroud and notice how he does all of this effortlessly. Notice how Shroud instantly runs to tap the spike after killing the Fae. He simultaneously realizes it is planted for Garage and prepares his crosser accordingly. By quickly tapping the spike, the enemy omen had to give away his location because he did not know if Shroud was defusing or not. Once Shroud saw how far the omen was from the spike, he decided to stick the half because omen could not peek in time and was delayed by the Fade Seas. After getting the half, he quickly gets off because he knows the omen is going to fight him. So instead of waiting for the omen to peek him, Shroud quickly swings the omen to get an easy kill and the defuse off in time. Another key point to notice is how Shroud did not stick the defuse. Only in some specific scenarios should you stick the defuse. But in general, when you are able to stick the spike to the halfway mark, you should get off because the opponent will attempt to peek you. Many players who try to stick the defuse will get peeked around the 3 fourths mark. If you have time to work with, then get the spike to half, get off, and prepare your crosshair for a peek. If you don't get peeked within 2 seconds, then quickly tap and then again hold for a peek. This will usually work, but it's important to note that there are no guarantees in this sort of scenario. Clutching is rewarding, but having friends there to hype you up makes it even better. Big shout out to Gamerlink for sponsoring this video. For all of you out there who are looking for a simple way to connect with other players, Gamerlink is your solution. This free app allows you to easily find like-minded gamers and join a community of players who share your passion for gaming. Gamerlink supports over 350 games across all major gaming platforms. You can filter by region, skill, playstyle, and communication preferences. So whether you're looking for a competitive squad to play with or just want to find some new friends to play casual games with, Gamerlink makes it easy to connect with other players and start gaming together. So if you're tired of playing alone or are struggling to find a reliable group, be sure to check out Gamerlink. It's available on Android and iOS for free. Click the link below to download the app and start playing with others today. The next crucial part of clutching that you need to implement in your own gameplay is good raw aim and spray transfers. It's no secret that you need to hit your shots to win any clutch. You see, in many clutches, you prepare your crosser for a peak or a position you anticipate the opponent to be at. But because you're not 100% sure where the opponent is, you need to have very precise flicks and fast reaction time if the opponent peaks at a position you did not expect. Similarly, if you are in a 1v2 or a 1v3 scenario, the ability to accurately control your phantom or vandal spray can get you some insane clutches. To improve your raw aim, I highly recommend you play aim trainers and practice playlists 
practice that focus on improving your flicks. And to practice your spray transfers, you should shoot these drones outside the range, or you can use Breach to push all the practice bots to one side and selectively shoot two bots to practice spray transfers on them. And before we get to the most important aspects of clutching rounds, make sure to drop a like and hit that subscribe button. We're so close to 10,000 subs and let's get to that 25k. Also, turn on notifications so you know when I go live. I'm streaming on YouTube almost every weekday and I'd love to see you guys there. And make sure to join my Discord. We have an awesome community and it's the best way to interact with me outside of my streams. Next, let's move on to clutching situations where it's just you versus multiple opponents. The most fundamental skill I noticed when looking at these clutches was how high level players isolate 1v1s and play around cover to create 1v1s. Look at this infamous clutch by 100 Thieves Hiko versus Gambit. Tight here, Asuna. Able to clear out the sonar's up. Live first, not be able to space space. Shade off's good for one. Eco. Eco. Trades one out. Oh, just narrowly not able to get the second. Hiko. He still some pitching in. He's able to get a second one. Hiko, 24 health. Running he for the fences is Chronicle has plenty of health. Chronicle on the tap. He's got to get Bros it to don't fake. He's got to get it to happen. Oh my Hiko god. Swing. After Asuna dies, Hiko's immediate instinct is to move to the right side of the container, only leaving his body exposed to anyone in front of him. Because of this slight reposition, he's able to eliminate the jet without getting traded by the Reyna, who is currently wrapping him. After this, he hugs the container. By being so close to the container, he's only able to be seen by one player at a time. You see, the enemy Sova is unable to see Hiko while he fights the Reyna, and the Reyna is unable to see Hiko as he tucks back to peek the Sova. And after he eliminates the Reyna, Hiko takes out his knife and runs to cover on the other side of the container to waste more time from the defuse before silently repositioning to secure a 7 HP clutch. When in these 1vx situations, it's important you play around cover so you can isolate gunfights and give short peeks so that you're able to quickly return to cover after engaging in a gunfight. Pay attention to this next clutch by NRG Artist, which is even more insane. Well, okay, Mark goes in and gets the dip away. Does get marked though. Prowler, not a problem just yet. Another no way! Oh, 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 not only is Artis in a 1v3 situation, but he's also 1 HP, act in a corner, and scanned by a Fade Haunt. Yet he's still able to isolate 3 separate 1v1s in a matter of 3 seconds by slightly exposing himself to one angle and instantly tucking into cover so that he can't get traded out. Again, when isolating 1v1s, it's important to give short peeks to lower the chances of the enemy getting a trade and think about the cover around you as you engage in gunfights. The next major aspect to clutching one versus multiple opponent situations is patience and capitalizing on the enemy team's overaggression. Trust me, in rank this will win you many rounds. Most clutches are won because the other team throws. By being patient and waiting for the opponent to give an unnecessary peek or push, you can get some easy kills and even a free clutch. So instead of giving up or being scared in a 1vx situation, play patient and wait for your opponent to make a mistake. Just look at this 1v4 clutch 100 Thieves Derek was able to pull off in a radiant lobby because the other team had no discipline. Don't give it to me. If you look at any 1v5 ace, they are usually a result of the opposing team peeking or pushing for no reason. By simply waiting, you can gain an advantage and potentially win the round. This is especially useful in lower ranks, as those players often give unnecessary peeks and push out to get the final kill. The next part of clutching I noticed when looking at all of these clips was how calm players were and how precise their aim was in clutch situations. Many of us, including myself, get nervous in a clutch situation and we end up whipping or spraying when we normally wouldn't have. A big factor that hurts your ability to clutch is being too self-conscious and anxious about the situation you are in. Some of us are simply more susceptible to these traits than others, which is why some people can clutch more often than others. For example, one study showed a strong correlation between basketball players who were more self-conscious and anxious and choking under pressure. Feeling the pressure is natural, but choosing to actively notice the pressure is under your control. The most important thing for being calm is to stop thinking about the fact that you are in a clutch. By consciously or even subconsciously thinking about this, you are hurting your focus on the situation at hand. During a clutch, you simply don't have the time or resources to think about who is spectating you, the outcome of the round, or the fact that you are in a clutch. You need to keep your head clear of irrelevant thoughts and focus on your crosshair placement, both your own and your opponent's position, what your next move will be, or what you think your opponent's next move will be. And if you have time in the round, take a deep breath and remind yourself to relax your shoulder and face muscles if they are overly tense. To get better at clutching, you need to understand the fundamental mechanics required to take gunfights. So check out my previous video over how to move and peek in Valorant. Remember to download GamerLink using the link below to help support the channel and to join my Discord. Drop a like, subscribe, and comment your best clutch below.